Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh um, How are you doing everyone? I hope that you are doing great Stay safe and keep social distancing during this uh, COVID-19 outbreak Thank you very much for helping me with the presentation on culture and identity uh, I'd like to share something different from the previous discussion but I, I think uh, you need to know more about identity so <clears throat> the, the title of my presentation is multimodal narrative inquiry it's based on my reflection as a teacher how I built how I developed my professionalism as a teacher this was presented when I was in Solo in 2019 for a conference So, I have five coverage in my presentations. The first one is orientation. I'm going to tell you about how the journey uh, begins. And the second one is review of related literature. I'd like to discuss a little bit about teacher identity and multimodality in narrative research. Number three is method, how I collect data and how I analyze the data. Number four, findings and discussion. Number five is conclusion. Let me tell you about my story. Um, in 2010, it was my first year as an English teacher. Uh, 2010 also my the, the year that I began continuing my study for master degree. And in 2011, I attended the first workshop. It was international brand because the speakers two from Singapore and one uh, he is Pandoyo, just coming back from his study in United States of America. And you can see here. This is my email that I that I, that I sent to Pandoyo, one of the speaker at the, at the workshops. And you know what? This is my first email. It was my first email in English. Even though I learned English in in my bachelor degree, but I didn't have any real practice in sending email. I even though I didn't have any kind of experience, I never wrote a formal email, but I have the courage to send it to Pandoyo. Now I'd like to discuss with you about teacher identity. Uh, let's define the identity itself. Berguizan considers identity as fluid, so it's, it's not static. It flows, it's dynamic, and it's constructed and negotiated in different contexts. So for example, if I came to campus, my identity is a lecture. But when you meet me outside of the campus, um, I'm no longer a teacher. So that the simple example. And also, identity is developed across space and time. It depends on how far you achieve something and in what place, in what context uh, your identity is developed. The second one is teacher identity development. Britzman and Warren in Park, 2018, has argued that teacher identity, so we, we talk particularly in teacher identity, shaped by tensions between, between theory or practice, knowledge and experience, and thought and action. Now let's talk something more specific, ELF context. ELF means English as lingua franca, so it means that the teacher who teach English is considered as non-native English teachers. And more specifically, uh, I'd like to talk about more in Indonesian context that the more teacher identity is reflected, the more ELP practice is contextualized. So we teach in, in Indonesian context, then the practice is also, uh, you know, situated in this uh, particular context and the num number five is identity development in 2.0 frames for example Kabilan did a research on Facebook as a virtual social network that mediates the development of English student teachers identity through online teacher portfolio so we uh, we we all know that picture is a word a thousand words people can share stories through pictures so that's why pictures is also employed as as a tool to mediate the uh, storytellers 
So this is the multi-modality in narrative research. Life became narrative shaped by repeated telling. So you, you, you can know a story because of its being repeated telling. And by being constructed alongside drawings and photographs means that drawings and photographs become tools to mediate the storytelling. And it's also a tool to identify analytically the narrative elements. For example, so, so semiotic modes, meaning-making rules, and interrelations contribute to a discursive presentations of reality. So the picture used to retell a story can become a linguistic resource that help the storyteller teller construct the story. In multimodal narrative research, experiencing in multimodal writing tasks, teachers in professional development felt engaged in this and empathy. So it means that photographs can be used as a tool to portray how teachers in a certain professional development program felt. So they, they kind of engage in zeal and empathy. And finally, engage in multimodal learning and teaching narratives and teachers not only gain insight into their own narratives, but they also add it to their repertoires of teaching. So this uh, guidance, this perspective guides uh, the implementations of multimodality in narrative research. Now let's talk about the present study. Uh, the, the present study employs multimodal narrative inquiry because narrative constructed by more than one mode as multimodal narratives, for instance, with narratives embedded with hip rollings of photographs. So if someone story tell uh, their biography or autobiography or their life, mediated by photographs, it means that they use multimodal narrative inquiry approach. And the present study is autobiography because it tells about my experience, how I feel, how I believe, and ex the, the experience that construct my identity as a teacher. And the tools is photo elicitation and image screenshot taken from Facebook and email from 2011 and 2018. And from this uh, years spanning data collection, I elicit three, 13 photos, three from email and eight from Facebook screenshots. And then uh, the findings reveal uh, into uh, three emergent themes. Number one is teacher researcher, teacher writer, and teacher learner episodes. So this is my first intelligence conference in Cambodia in 2014. The photo was taken when I was having a conference dinner and business meeting. So as I told you that in 2012 I earned my master degree and then I learned 2013 I learned how to write an abstract for a conference in 2014 I received a travel grant from UTS University of Technology Sydney. So from this conference, I begin. I, I feel very excited because uh, it was my first international journey. And I also feel anxiety because I met people around the globe, meet in a formal meeting, share experience. So yeah, I think it's normal for people to, uh, to experience that kind of feeling. It's still about teacher learner episodes. Why? Because uh, I think that in this episode, I learn a lot how to become a teacher. So you can see from the photographs and captions. When I was a kid, I always dream of talking with tourists in English, and thank God, I had an opportunity to visit the United States of America in 2016. The lesson learned is that in developing our own TESOL professional identity, I realize of marginality, acceptance of my membership in multiple professional communities around the globe. So if you want to be accepted, 
you need to get involved you need to experience this kind of professional development program and the third one is teacher learner episodes uh, this is the photo that I take that I took in my class when I was in my former university um, I, I wrote the caption in Basimisa and tried to translate it here I don't choose to become a teacher instead it chooses me my sincere hope I can not teach without preaching and educate with a role model so in this in this photo I learned that if you want to become a teacher you need to engage your students in learning and that's why you can also facilitate the students learning and the ability to in integrate theory and practice is vitally important in the development of teacher professional identity and the second one is teacher researcher episode uh, these are my conference in 2015 in Indonesia uh, yeah you know one one of the important sections in in the conference is to talk with uh, the keynote speakers my impressions of the talking with one of the plenary speakers I brought into my Facebook uh, status and these are the pictures that I took from my uh, FLL conference in Salatiga and ICTT in Yogyakarta and these are my teacher research episode another teacher research episode my first participation in research funded by international foundations online posting uh, that Pak Andayo uh, tagged me in his status because we collaborate in a in a Cambridge University press uh, program funded by this university in this case in this uh, from this research I learned how to do research and I also learned how to teach using digital storytelling and I learned how to write into this book now a teacher writer episode number three so these are the emails that I received from editors uh, in United in, in the United Kingdom so this is my first international publication in 2017 I learned that be friend with rejection because in this first email I my, my paper was rejected and in this email my paper was accepted so try to write again if you got rejections and keep trying and keep trying until you are uh, familiar with this kind of situations the, sec the next one is teacher writer episode these are my international publication with Panoyo uh, published by Ratledge International and it was one of my Scopus published manuscript uh, Indonesian Journal of Applied Linguistics I learned that to become a co-author I need to uh, be consistent to commit with my uh, with my my passion in writing and then you have to learn how to write revise and rewrite again and be strong with comments feedback given by the editors and the last one is teacher writer editor uh, teacher writer episode I mean uh, I wrote a status publish of Paris any successful author I, I, I took it from Jexy Richards any successful author will attest that writing is a time-consuming process that requires not only moments of creativity and inspirations but large amounts of patience persistence and efforts so I learned from this picture that you need to build motivations you need to contribute and you need to inspire people so from this I conclude that Reflecting on my multimodal narrative, I realized that I have gone this far and at the same time I began to understand that my journey to developing my professional lessons as an English teacher will be absolutely further than this. In my photo showcase that the journey in professional development has built my identity as a teacher, learner, teacher researcher, and teacher writer. So learning has played an important role in developing a teacher capacity and teacher researcher the power of networking has helped me gain better understanding in doing research and teacher writer I saw my students struggling in learning to write the way I saw myself so be persistent thank you very much